We will now get started. Um, I'm pleased to welcome all the members of our committee this afternoon for our meeting, which is a day or two later than it normally would be. So at the moment, um, good afternoon, everyone. I am pleased to welcome committee members and guests of the Committee for Student Affairs and Special Programs. Everyone should have um, some form of electronic device, laptop, whatever, if not, and you need access to supporting documents for this meeting, it is some place around, where is that? There are copies of the agenda and supporting documents on the table if you do not, if you do not have paperless access at this time. Um, you have received the minutes. May I have an approval for the meet, for the minute of the meeting of January 9th, 9, 2017? So moved. A, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. Approval of the Graduate School of Public Health and Health Policy Establishment of a College Association and Student Activity Fee. Uh, may I ask our Vice Chancellor Rosa to provide an overview? Sure, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, in terms of the context in which the uh, Graduate School of Public Health uh, is requesting uh, this action, um, they are proposing the establishment of a college association and the student activity fee. Um, the, uh, the fee is $41.45 established for each semester. Uh, the vote was 44 in favor, 14 opposed. 11.6% uh, of students from the Graduate School of Public Health voted. Um, the fee would establish extracurricular activities at the School of Public Health. Um, and Dean Amahandas <coughs> and Dean Ashish Josi are here to represent the college, and, uh, I, and they have, I believe, some students with them. So um, uh, Dean Amahandas and Dean Yoshi, would you please join us here at the table? Um, and Jane Davis from the General Counsel's Office is available to answer any questions that we may have regarding the establishment of a college association. Welcome. Thanks. <coughs> members have any questions. We now have at the table the members of the um, School of Public Health and Public Policy. Are there any questions? Um, uh, would anyone like to make a statement about the importance and the relevance of the fees to co-curricular programming at the School of Public Health. Uh, we're honored to be asked to join the table. Uh, with your permission, I defer to my students in uh, sharing their perspective. Please. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. For the record, could you please state your names? Sure. My name is Katrina Mateo. I'm a doctoral student at the school. And my name is William Robinson. I am an MPH student, health policy management. Thank you. Welcome. Sure. So both of us have been on the uh, bridging, Student Bridging Committee. It was a group that was assembled back in December. All students were, um, uh, from their own volition, decided to be part of this bridging committee to put together um, a referendum for the student activity fee and also work on writing the Constitution and bylaws for a new graduate student association. Um, as a new school in a transition, an important transitional year, it was very important to have a group of students that were very active um, to, to meet regularly for the past six, seven months um, to have this activity fee put through and to establish uh, student governance. Um, so this, this really is exciting for us as a school, as students, especially since we're new and we're looking to really support students in any way possible. And this fee, the, um, the college association, the Graduate Student Association is going to be absolutely vital to ensuring that students are supported in every way possible. Oh yes, we certainly have heard quite a few vocal <coughs> students uh, asking for 
student activities, basically uh, with clubs and also with an alumni association as well. And we believe the student activity fee would be necessary in order to achieve that and to provide a solid foundation to achieve those goals for the rest of uh, the history of the school. Um, Donna, thank you very much uh, for joining us. And we, we're, um, in terms of the policy calendar, we're on item one. And these are our colleagues from the School of Public Health. Thank you. Um, any, any other questions? I had a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, um, there is some advising, there's an advisory role for the faculty who be playing on this college assessment issue, correct? Yes. Okay. How will these uh, faculty members be selected? <laughs> so we have a faculty student council and these will be elected representatives from the faculty student council so it's not going to be like just a random pick but we will have student actively participation on the nomination process okay. so they'll come out of governance uh, the second question I had was just uh, related to the kinds of things that you'll be doing uh, based on the description that I read. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like somebody who is training in the School of Public Health would need to make presentations and be involved in various projects in order to have professional training for the careers you hope to have. Mm -hmm. um, is there going to be any way of making sure that this kind of experiential like, uh, learning experience is supported beyond just a college association, so that more than just a few students would be episodically assisted? Yeah, exper experiential learning uh, forms part and parcel of the curriculum uh, at the master's and doctoral level, as indicated by our accreditation body, the Council for Education and Public Health. Uh, so a certain number of hours in field experience are part of the curriculum itself, followed by a culminating experience where the incorporation of the skills during uh, the uh, uh, entire curriculum uh, gained as well as the field experience are incorporated into a final uh, presentation. So the college association would be supporting this or supporting students who have difficulties? Right. So actually, as part of the student activity fee, um, one of the primary items that this is actually through a survey that we administer to the whole school to gauge needs and one of them was um, support to attend conferences. This is absolutely vital for graduate students, masters and doctoral students to be able to sh showcase their work, know that they will have financial support to attend conferences, especially outside of APHA, which is our the public health major conference. There are many, many other conferences that can give students the ability to present their work as first authors and knowing that part of the student activity fee will be there to support either registration for the conference or partial covering for travel, for example. This is, will be decided by the college association how to portion out the money that's collected. And so that's one way that students are going to be making presentations um, and really putting into practice what they're learning in the classroom. Yes. Just, uh, just uh, for clarification, the School of Public Health supports any student that has a first authored presentation at our national professional body, which is the American Public Health Association. Last year, we had 12 students, doctoral and master's students, present at the national conference. But uh, since our domain is very diverse, the school is unable to support students at any of the other national conferences. And so we created a, a classification where the school is responsible for APHA. And if you have things accepted elsewhere, then the student fee will cover that. It would also add to a much more robust experience as well as networking opportunities, both for those who attend those conferences and then later become uh, members of the Alumni Association so that we can grow the school and expand the networks. Yes. And so when you were initially coming up with the number for the fee, uh, what did you use as a guiding principle to develop the uh, sum? So part of the formative research uh, before uh, deciding on a uh, dollar amount, we actually looked at student activity fees from other CUNY schools, ones that are comparative in terms of graduate students, the size of the school, and we had um, a range of, of number options. And part of the survey that was administered to the whole, to the whole student body included um, uh, an option to vote, essentially, on different, different amounts, assuming it would cover 
um, issues X, you know, one, two, three. Um, and based on those, there was a very sort of clear uh, trend in terms of you know, a lower number and a higher number, conditional on whether it would cover certain activities. And so we found a happy medium and made sure that um, the student body was accepting of that. We had an internal vote within the school um, to vote on that amount. Well done. Thank you. Um, or I was just going to ask do the students have been represented if I have any questions. Thank you. Um, I just want to make a comment and I got a question. <coughs> uh, the first comment I'm going to make is that um, a student from your college, Rodrigo Cardozo, mm -hmm. um, he did reach out to, to us throughout the year mm -hmm. to tell us about the challenges you faced and um, he, he shared with us that the dean has been very supportive in developing an association and activity fees. Um, and so I want to thank you for that dean and helping them through this process. Um, the question I have today is that um, pending the approval of this association, what will be the selection process of the first officers that will serve on the association given that the election season has passed for the students? So we've been working very, very hard in the last couple of weeks to ensure that we had actual elections. Um, we just made the cut. We did it. Uh, we had elections at the end of April, early May, which actually overlapped with finals, and yet we still had students who um, ran for positions, ran um, for officer positions. Both of us included, we ran for um, officer positions and we're going to be um, part of the representing body. And so we do have um, elected students already to the College Association. And so um, pending this approval, we'll start um, boots on the ground working this summer to figure out the student activity fee, how it's portioned out, and figure out how to process new clubs for the fall. One of the most important things that we do have is a treasurer who would help oversee. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We do. Yes. Okay. Um, Thank you. Any other question from students? That being the case, may I um, call the question a motion to approve? Second. Second. All in favor. Those in favor. Approved. Thank you. With our gratitude, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, with the chair's permission, we can now move to policy calendar item number two, uh, which is uh, the uh, fee resolution for the New York City College of Technology, uh, which proposes a student activity fee increase. By way of context, uh, there's the proposal of uh, $5.50 increase for full-time students and four dollars for part-time students. Um, this increases to fund student government clubs and student activities. This represents the first increase since 1998. Um, the vote was 420 students in favor and 258 students opposed. 4.5% uh, of uh, City Tech students voted and uh, we're pleased that President Hotzler is here. Uh, to represent the college, President Hotzler, can you please join us? <clears throat> Welcome. Thank you. Madam Chair. President, President Hotzler. No. Sorry. Yes. We we'll call on you to um, just justify this increase and. Well, I think uh, it's a fairly modest increase for the first time in, in 19 years uh, that the uh, students have requested the opportunity to increase the fee. And it basically uh, comes down to uh, increased costs, and they want to maintain the ability of the clubs and the, uh, the student government to provide appropriate uh, events and activities for the student body. Any questions? Any questions? Yes. Are there any students here um, from the College of <coughs> uh, No, I don't believe any came today. Would you be able to provide a, a breakdown of what the new appropriations will go for each year? Uh, sure. I don't know if you, you have the detail of the, uh, the resolution, but uh, basically that, that increase which is $5.50 for the full-time students, uh, is broken up into three uh, areas. Uh, there would be uh, an increase uh, in the student uh, government appropriation, uh, an increase to the clubs, and uh, an increase to uh, the services provided to the, uh, to the students. Uh, that five fifty is broken up into those three uh, categories.
Any other question? Uh, could you uh, um, kind of explain the, we see that there was a low turnout in the, the student elections, 4% of the total student population. Uh, kind of highlight um, some of the reasons why um, the, the students didn't turn out to support uh, an increase or, or to vote in general, either in our polls or in favor. The, the um, results here are actually uh, consistent with the average turnout that the college has seen over the years, every year for student elections. Um, not not uh, particularly different uh, from year to year. So we usually have about 5% of the students uh, participating in the election process. Of course, this is done at the same time that they vote on uh, in the student body. Are there any questions on faculty Thank you. Um, I guess yes, I another. just would add um, mm -hmm. one comment. Um, you have a or, comment or, or recommendation. Um, given the the turnout of the election, I, I would advise that if if this were to go through, that some type of communication be sent out to all the students um, to notify them of the changes in the activity fee, so that they are informed and have the ability to you know, spread the word or contest their disagreement or agreement with that, given that every student may not know that there's going to be a change in the activity fee um, pending in the fall. That would be my recommendation. Yes. Uh, this is actually a question to uh, Mr. Borrington. Uh, what, on average, is the turnout for typical elections CUNY-wide? You know, on average, what, what kind of turnouts do we get for votes for, in student elections? It, it, it fluctuates, but 4%, it, it varies, but then you look at the, the amount of people that actually vote on said referendum. Um, so you got a 4% turnout of the total population, but that doesn't mean the whole 4% voted in favor. Um, and that's usually a concern that we've been having over the years. And so the only thing that I can kind of recommend is that so long as every student at the campus knows about the change and has the ability and the opportunity to voice their concerns, um, that is okay. We can support that because it seems that they followed the process here. Um, they did a petition. They got the 10%. Students came out and voted. Now the next step is to let those students that did not vote know that there, there's a change happening. And so they still have some steps in the process to voice their concern. I would just be clear. I have a very active student government, and they, uh, they really campaigned. This was a, an initiative driven uh, by the student government, recognizing that they needed a little more support going forward. So they were very uh, proactive in, in uh, driving this forward. Any other comments? <coughs> Thank you. Go Thank ahead, you. Emma. No, it's okay. I, I just, you know, I would just say that <coughs> looking at looking at various referendums that were part of this meeting and seeing the low numbers, I'm just wondering, and you know, this isn't really an action item. There are ways in which certainly the faculty could support student associations in eliciting greater levels of participation among the students, particularly when you get down to bread and butter issues like student fees that go up. Um, because it's just, it, it's not a useful preparation for citizenship if they're not participating in this kind of a referendum. Professor, I think it's a really a great suggestion on our end in student affairs. Uh, this Friday, um, we're, we're pleased to host the new leadership challenge which is an opportunity for newly elected student leaders from across the university to gather and, and do some developmental work at Brooklyn College. And for us, at least in terms of our framing, uh, the day, we can make that a point of emphasis. That way that we, the student leaders themselves can, can be affirmed in that message. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other comment? Hmm. Thank you so much, Vice Chancellor. Call the question. Call the question. Are there um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? Abstentions? The motion is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Hotzler. Thank you. We, we now uh, move to policy calendar item number three. Uh, resolution at John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Um, they propose a student activity fee increase. Um, the increase calls for a, a $30 increase for full-time undergraduate students 
and a $25 increase for part-time undergraduate students, and a $20 increase for graduate students. Um, the increase uh, proposes uh, to Im improve services across the board with several new earmarkings designed to uh, benefit students. Uh, the last increase at John Jay was in 20, 2013, and prior to that increase, 25 years before that. Um, there was an 18% voter participation rate. Uh, the vote was 979 in favor and 942 opposed. Um, here is uh, uh, ABP uh, Michael Sachs, uh, along with uh, some student leaders who I'll ask him to introduce. Michael, thank you. Hello, my name is Michael Sachs. I am the Assistant Vice President Dean of Students at John Jay College, and I'll let the, the students introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Javar Duffus. I'm the Treasurer of Student Council, fiscal year 2016-2017. And I'm Roman Gressier, Vice President of Student Council, fiscal year 2016-17. Welcome. Thank you. Any, dis any discussion on the, on the question? Uh, you uh, <laughs> yes. I have a question. Thank I'm you. starting with the student this time around. Go ahead. Oh, Very good. I appreciate good. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my question is that I've I seen in some of the materials that there's a breakdown. There's a, a new set of areas that the college seeks to appropriate funding for. Um, and I just have a bit concern that this is a very high increase for the student activity fee. Um, within one year. Could you explain the reasoning behind the, the new allocation for these different areas um, and services? Um, so um, our students being involved on campus, the population is increasing. So I know a lot of the times when we think of um, CUNY, it is a community college, and a lot of times students often have to work and they also have to attend classes, but not many students stay on campus and actually engage in club activities as well as participate in the other functions that the college has to offer. But that population is increasing, and with that increase of the population, we also requested an increase for the budget. Also, the specific reason we pushed for the referendum was um, to get a full-time nurse on campus. Currently, we have a part-time nurse on campus, which is kind of hectic. For instance, there was a day where I was sitting in someone's office and I accidentally ate shellfish. I'm allergic to shellfish. There was no one there to even be with me for the duration of, let's say, an ambulance to come or whatever to happen. Someone had to run to Dwayne Reed to get me what I needed to calm down from my reaction to the shellfish. So that is the primary reason. Um, we also increased um, the accessibilities for additional programming. The LGBTQ plus unit that you see there is to pay for the coordinator, um, a, a portion of the coordinator's salary there. We also increased United Nations because historically they've come to student council to request funds. Um, student council is one of the largest earmarks on the association that did not get an increase. Um, you'll also see that there is a single stop that is on there that we also, um, requested funding for because there's a specific position within single stop that provides services to the students that the contract ends within three years and we may we don't know if that contract will be renewed okay. so we have to be prepared for if that doesn't happen to ensure that we can supplement for our students um, we also have an increase for careers which is a program they within careers they have a program that they pay students with stipends it's um, more of a, um, a program for students to help other students get get themselves ready job ready and um we also pay for media services that you see there i just thank you I, if it's okay yes. i just have a follow-up question as a student at the college um do you think services as career services having a full-time nurse on campus having a coordinator for lgbt um things do you think that's essential should the college have that in place for you so if I could speak to that. Um, I think that in many ways, students are in, in many ways paying a lot of money to come to the college. Mm -hmm. And they're expecting <coughs> certain things as a result of that education. They're expecting to have adequate access to internships and opportunities, which comes through careers. They're expecting to not get to their senior year and realize that they should have taken three classes a year before that, and they should have gone through this track or that track. Uh, whereas if they had better access to academic advising and things of that nature, then they might have had a better opportunity to stay on track. Um, you know, there are all sorts of, I think that it's really part of the 
overall academic value um, that students are getting when they come to the college. It's something that they expect. And when it's not there because of a commuter school, that's a problem. And so in um, talking with all these different departments, they would always come to us and ask for more funding. So they would say, look, we are really hurting. We're in a pinch. We don't have enough money to give all the services that we need to all the students that are asking. And so when we initiated this, this referendum, that was one of the, the primary, that was one of the preliminary things that we did was gathering all the information about who needed money and where. And so all of these earmarks that we created were strictly based on need as assessed by their petitions. And, and, and I, I think therein lies one of our most challenging issues that we face today in the university, um, that we're, we're now using the activity fee, which was created for students to have an experiential learning opportunity while they're attending a city university college. Um, but now we're covering the student activity fee to pay for the daily needs that our students should already have at the campus. Um, and as you see, an exorbitant amount of $30 to fund a full-time nurse, which our students need, to fund career services, to fund um, academic departments so students have a quality education. I'm, I'm just very concerned that this is the path that we're continuing to go down as tuition rises students are going to have their activity fee increase to fund things that our students need to have a, a basic quality education. Um, can I respond to that? Yes, you may. So um, a lot of the things that are increased here also specifically benefit the students financially. For instance, you see that there are advocate programs, like our, or rather what we're doing in careers where we're paying students to assist other students. So it, all, essentially, it all goes back into the student's benefit, which I also think is the purpose of our students' activity fee. Oh, there, yeah. Uh, I have a couple of things. Uh, one is I see that it was a hotly contested election. I mean, 18 percent, so that's almost five times the average that uh, Mr. Don, uh, Mr. Borrington spoke about previously. Uh, and, the, and it was close, right? Only about 20 votes difference. So I, I wonder if you wanted to, to share about that. How, what was the tenor of the election? May I? Mm -hmm. Yes. OK. Um, well, to speak to that a bit, so we noticed a few things. The more informed students were about the services that they, that they would receive from the increase, the more receptive they were. Um, but if we were just to say, hey, we're jacking up the fee, then students obviously would say, oh, no, you know, we don't want that. Um, but throughout the process of elections, we even have um, advisors that were tabling. And they came back to us and reported that the more students knew, the more receptive they were, and um, the more they tended to vote yes according to the trends that they could track throughout the day. So um, a lot of it was based on a lot of, I think a lot of the, um, the votes in, against the proposal were based on lack of information or misinformation. So, but it was tight. It's yeah. still very mm -hmm. tight. The other thing is there's actually uh, something in, the, in our packet which speaks to its Board of Trustees Minutes of Proceedings, April 29th, 2013. And it says, John Jay College Criminal Justice Student Activity Fee Increase. According to this, it says the last uh, fee increase was in 2013. And it went from uh, 49.60 to 99.60. So uh, my understanding was you were saying that the fee had not increased in 20 years. Are you saying it was? No, that was, was that a mis- That was that. city town. You, yeah. Oh, no, that I, was, am they, I confused? Yeah. yeah. The heat's getting that they, that they raised it in 2013, but that prior to that, that it hadn't been raised in, in that amount of time. Okay. Well, then I, I, then I just want to share one last thing uh, concerning uh, Mr. Warrington's statement. Is that is something that maybe as a committee we need to uh, take a look at in the way that uh, the relationship between what's expected from the institution based on tuition payments and then what's expected uh, that things like student activity fees should uh, typically uh, pay for. Because we always, you know, personally from the old days, I would always think student activity fees were enhancements to the, to the, to, to the, to the school experience, the day-to-day -day classroom experience. Uh, and, and take a look at this because uh, certainly I know that the USS is concerned with rising tuition and fees 
and now we have Excelsior coming down the pike, which will only actually cover tuition. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of concerns, and maybe we, we might want to look at that down the road, how all these things are relating to each other, and what various colleges are doing as far as how are they taking care of basic services throughout the college. Any other? Yes. And, and just to note uh, that, that the previous increase to the student activity fee, again, covered um, one of those essential costs that should have been covered within the college. And so to see these drastic increases in, tu in the student activity fee, in addition to the student's tuition, it is a lot. And, and it concerns me as a student representative here that in a, a very contested election, that I don't have a, a clear guidance as to what the will of the John Jay students was. Particularly, I'm actually a student at John Jay. Um, and so I, I look at that and I say, well, what did the people at John Jay want? And I didn't see that they're all saying, we, we want an increase of this magnitude. And, 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 and in fact, you, you said that those that voted against didn't have the right information. Was that not the responsibility of those pushing the referendum to say, get the accurate information out so we can make a decision? Um, and I commend you on your work. I, I, we appreciate what you do on behalf of the students. It's not to undermine. I understand that it's tough, and you're trying to make a better experience for the students at John Jay. Um, but again, as a student representative, I'm just making sure that what we're doing is in support and in the best interest of those students so that they continue to walk through the door at CUNY, and they're not hindered in any way um, by the type of services or programs that we offer. Um, if I may. Yes. Since I have been at John Jay for about eight months now, I've never seen a group of students in my 25 years in higher ed that push information out in a variety of different ways, various types of media, on our boards, on our posters, every way to get students to understand what this particular referendum was about. Not saying vote or don't vote, but here are the facts and here what it is. We just completed a diversity survey at John Jay, the first that ever has occurred on the climate. There was an eight, uh, there was a 12% response rate of all students, which is one of the highest response rates we ever have. The areas that are earmarked here that represent diverse areas are ones that the students very clearly said we need, like a full-time LGBTQA coordinator as opposed to a quarter time. Areas that are essential to the growth of a very diverse very active student population. Um, what the services will provide is a very well-rounded experience for students that go to John Jay. And it will allow them to succeed and to move on um, to other careers and beyond John Jay. And so normally I would say, yes, this is a high number. And I agree with you, in many other institutions, these are services that would be provided out of the general budget but they're services that our students need and they desperately need. Thank you. Um, Can, yes. I just wanted to follow up again. So now redoing my math, mm -hmm. it, we're almost tripling the student fee in the, in, the, in the span of four years. If we're looking at the 49, 60 number from tw before the passing of this in 2013 and now we're looking at a number of uh, 139, is it, what is, where's my, I'm going to get all my numbers, so many numbers here. Uh, no, 130.20, it's close to tripling in the, in the manner, in the, in the span of four years. I'm just, for information's sake, I'm just putting it out there. Yes? Um, I noticed that another senior college just walked in here with a, with a similar, um, referendum, but they only chose to increase it by almost less than half of what this is proposing. 120 is a lot of money actually from CUNY students. Um, the original proposal at 99 is still probably is the top um, when it comes to student activity around CUNY. Um, so you said you were playing catch up in the last 25 years, and when you increase your, your student activity fee in 2013, you almost just caught up. So I, I can understand in the past years before, you, you didn't have enough funding. So you didn't have a, um, what's that called? The budget that will, the surplus, which you could dive in and use. But then increasing the student activity fee for the future students 
wouldn't catch up with the surplus. So you're probably going to have to ask for more money from CUNY Central and CUNY as a whole, rather than the students. Yes. Mm -hmm. Please um, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I believe that um, it was these, these issues were brought up in a couple of forums that there's some need at, at John Jay. And, and, and I believe that our, our, our chair of the board said that we need to look into that and find ways to fund full-time nurses and essential things. I don't know where the conversation went since then. Um, but I do think as a, as a system, we need to look across at our campuses and see where there's funding to make sure we have essential things. Um, because I, I stand with you that we, we do need to make sure you have a full-time nurse. Um, on campus for the safety of our students. But I don't know if, if making it come from the activity fee is the route that we should be going. So, yes. So, um, so I understand that, that, you know, the free, the, the, the fee is tripled and that, you know, we're increasing it and we're relying on the student activities fee. But these things are essential and they need to happen. And even though they're essential and they need to happen, it's something that the students expressed that they wanted, and the students came to us about it, and we, as student leaders, pushed the agenda for the students, right? In terms, and Michael Sachs brought it up, we did the best we could to advertise and to inform um, the, the most amount of students that we could. And um, at the end of the day, I, I don't think it comes down to the numbers. Um, as important as those numbers may be to some, I think it is also important that the students get what they desire out of John Jay and that it comes from them because they have expressed that they wanted it, right? So I, I think if we push any other avenue of budgeting that we can, my question is how long will that take? Because at the end of the day, um, not only was it just me who went through an allergic reaction, but maybe a month later I saw a student in a gurney going to a hospital. It takes 17 minutes for the hospital that is right next to our school to come into our school and pick up a student, right? So in that 17 minutes, something can happen and we don't have anyone on campus to take care of that student. So how long will that, that, that avenue take as opposed to this one that the students expressed that they needed, right? And if I might just add to that also, not for nothing, uh, John Jay has been a senior college since the 60s, and we still don't have a full-time nurse on campus. And so to that point, I would say, how long do we have to wait? Absolutely. And so the students have said, well, no, we're going to take things into our own hands, and we're going to do this and get the services that our students need. And I think at the end of the day, we have to do what we have to do to provide our students with the basic needs to have an, an enriching academic experience. I, I, yeah. I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. Um, I just disagree with the direction. And, and as your student representative on this committee and throughout this university, I'm committed to making sure that you have that essential need, whether it comes from the state, the city, the federal government, or the central office. Um, that's what I'm committed to. And I know my colleague, John, here is committed to that. Um, and we'll do what we can to make sure it happens. Um, but again, that first thing we're always thinking about is the access for all students. And sometimes raising the fee can close the door for two or three students that don't get financial aid. Not all, you know, four out of their 10 students are not on, don't get financial aid. And so when you raise the fee, you, you put their, their access in jeopardy. And that's what we're concerned about. Even if it's one or two students, it's the, it's the access for all. Um, so we agree that these things are essential and they're needed. Um, I, I just would add that. Um, OK, I'll take the last comment. If I may also, I, I pay out of pocket, and I pay out of state. And I'm virtually probably about 95% financially self-sufficient. Everything that I pay for school comes directly out of my bank account. And so I'm not saying this from the stance of, well, you know, daddy's paying my tuition. And so it doesn't really matter to me if there's another $30 on somebody else. It's coming straight from my money. And so I can only speak for myself and saying that as somebody who has to pay for this, I want it for me and I want it for everybody else. So I'd just like to close with that. Final, final. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I'm very glad you, you paid for your parking and got us. I, I, I have you for your tuition yourself. That's a very commendable thing. Um, so you're absolutely right. All the services and are required and are needed to complete the educational um, process here at CUNY. But Looking at the numbers, 979 to 942, pretty sure the student, most of the students probably didn't even know what they were voting for, although you said you did push out the numbers and the facts and everything. 
um, it's still very tight. It's still a very tight election. Like, unless you're voting for people in office, this doesn't really always go through when it comes to a referendum, unless you're putting people in office. This is a referendum, something consensus has to be built around upon to get passed. Um, do you want to add anything else to that? Okay, I'd like, I'd, I'd just like, um, may I then just call the motion for approval? May I call the motion? So moved. Second. Oh, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Maybe I need a show of hand. Okay, the motion is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Any opposed? For, for the record, I abstain. Okay. The Thank motion you. is Thank approved. You. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving to policy calendar, calendar item number four, uh, Hunter College re-earmarking of the undergraduate student activity fee. Um, by way of context, uh, Hunter College is proposing no change in total fees. Uh, due to changes in their allocating bodies, uh, the rear earmarking would require Board of Trustee approval. Um, there was a 10% voter participation um, in terms of this resolution. 936 voted in favor, 692 opposed. Uh, Vice President Aravanian is, is here and uh, will represent the college. Welcome, Aya. Thank you. Thank you. Vice President Aravina, yeah. would you like just to make a statement about the uh, about the resolution? Yes, I'm Aya Aravina. I'm the Vice President of uh, Student Affairs and Dean of Students. And I first uh, thank you. And I want to uh, send my uh, apologies. President Rab uh, could not be here because she had another commitment based on some changes in the meeting. But she sends her very best wishes and thanks you for this opportunity. This is um, only a change in our earmarks that was initiated by uh, Matt LeCastro, as you probably have his statement in your packet, uh, who is a, go a student government representative uh, as well as president uh, this year. And uh, to my memory, because I've been at CUNY for a little while, uh, we have not uh, done any of changes in the earmark in the last 20 to 30 years. And so uh, this particular student government, they're really very active and in uh, uh, calling on participation from all the students and clubs and organizations. And they decided that they need to take a fresh look at what has been earmarked in the last 20 or 30 years and see that perhaps we have a new and different population at CUNY than we had then. Uh, perhaps we have new and different uh, needs and, and uh, uh, answers to students who have been asking and talking about various kinds of services that we have. So we have not changed the overall fee, but we have changed how we distribute the money that is collected from our students. Thank, Thank you. you. Question? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I see that there is a, a line for renovation of student space. Uh, there's been some redistribution here. Yes. Right. And you have undergraduate tuition services um, and Office of Accessibility. How is the revenue used for the renovation of, of student space? Well, if <clears throat> we have a building called Thomas Hunter Hall, which is the original elementary and, and high school building. And every once in a while, clubs need to have some renovations in the current space, whether they want to put up a wall, take down a wall, put up lights, uh, change electricity and things of that sort, or change the lights in the hall in that particular Thomas Hunter Hall. They're all interior changes. And the students uh, for the past certainly 17 years since President has been, President Raz has been the president, she has generally paid for half of their renovations and they kick in the other half, um, more or less half. So uh, they're minor, they're not huge resident renovations. One uh, in the last five years was a renovation to a student club room that is used by all students for various activities in the evening, whether it's panels and whether it's discussions and poetry readings and things of that sort. Yes. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about walking through the rationale for the, the, some of the switching that's going on as far as moving the money around? 
Um, Are you comfortable doing it? Yes, I am. Down. We can just go down the list between mm -hmm. the current and proposed for full time, since obviously part time would only be a fraction right. of those numbers. Right. So we're only where there are changes, obviously. Right, and and if I may, just comment on some of the new initiatives that students have come up with. And uh, one of them is the tutoring services, is that we're very concerned about graduation rates, we're very concerned about retention rates, and students themselves said that we need to have more tutoring services. And so we're working very closely, we'll be working very closely with the student government and specifically the uh, School of Arts and Sciences, where, where most of our students are. And some of the tutoring services that are needed by students are, who are kind of on the cusp in, in terms of doing a little bit better. So I feel very good about that aspect. And I must say I feel quite good about all of the changes. Um, uh, the, um, you also notice that there is a change in emergency food and shelter in that students, um, as many of our schools, we have students in need, whether that be metro cards, whether that be food, whether that sometimes would be housing and, and help with uh, rent that has been uh, behind, or with books and things of that sort. So the student government has now voted that they will uh, set aside this amount of money to be given to uh, the Office of Student Affairs, and I have an individual in our office who manages this, who gets uh, metro cards, who gets food cards from Food Emporium and other places, as well as the ability to give out some stipends to students who are in dire need of, of emergency money. And then, of course, we have meticulous <laughs> bookkeeping for the student government. And uh, so it's really worked out really nicely because students feel cared for. They feel that they're part of the college. There's a sense of community in that and that there's a place for them to go and a face for them to see when they are in trouble of this sort. Uh, there's, there's also um, for uh, health care products that seems to be a very large request from especially female students for any kind of health care products. And so the student government felt very strongly about providing health care products specifically for women. And they will be placed in uh, student activities office, in my office, in the health office, in uh, admissions, in uh, any of the offices that are large enough to hold students. And, and uh, I feel quite good about that. Uh, we're working out the details exactly how that's to be done, but, but we'll, we'll find a way on, on that aspect as well. And then the student uh, government voted that um, some of the uh, surplus money, we create a fund in the college association for all students at Hutter College who have this kind of a unique uh, uh, project they want to do. And they're not perhaps even part of a club, but there's a number of students who want to do this unique product, project or an experiential uh, learning type of situation where they can apply for money for, uh, for these kinds of projects and obviously be done not repeatedly, but uh, every time there's an application for it, and it'll be judged and students will be on, on the committee to judge this. So I feel rather nice about that because it's a nice opportunity for students who are commuter students to be able to be engaged in, in what the university calls now experiential activities and, and, and learnings and so forth. So, yes, so I feel good about that. Well, I'm speaking to things like, oh. looks like intercollegiate athletics, okay. recreation, mm -hmm. uh, performing arts all get bumps, mm -hmm. and okay. then the yearbook takes a hit, but I'm guessing there's, you know, people are going digital, and the media board as well is probably outdated. Music goes up, so I feel good about that being an arts professor. The Green <laughs> Initiative uh, also loses some money, which is kind of funny, considering the concerns of global warming, whether people believe in it or not. Child care <laughs> has also lost money, and I'm oh. wondering if, if the numbers of students who have uh, children that need, you know, when the, that need caring during uh, school hours is, has dropped. Also, the Welfare Rights Initiative, I'm not really sure exactly what that is, but has lost. I know that welfare was changed in the Clinton administration, but uh, <laughs> I see that it's being moved. So I don't know what Envoy is, excuse me, or the radio station. I guess the radio station is obsolete in some sense. But uh, Office of Student Activities certainly has gotten, and I don't know if you've mentioned that before, but they got the biggest bump. That's the biggest change on the, uh, and un, well, the tutoring you already mentioned. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to comment to, on those. Yes, thank those. you. Well, we certainly, we view that athletics is an important component of student success in the college. 
We find that our athletes are really quite successful academically as well as performance-wise, and we'd like to have more students uh, come to our, meet, our, our games and our meets and so forth. And so we want to have it more advertised. We want to give opportunities for more students to have recreational uh, athletic time. So we felt that uh, as a college that this was a good thing to bump up some of their uh, uh, fees. Uh, in terms of childcare, when uh, Donna Shalala established the child care center at Hunter College about 30 years ago, when she was at the college, and she came back for the reunion of 25 years, and what she said as we looked at the pictures on the wall, and she said, you know, every college around the country, the child care needs are decreasing for the most part because our neighbor neighborhoods have child care centers and child care facilities and so forth, and that's true at Hunter as well is that we have fewer students now who are more traditional college age. Uh, we have more students who are traditional college age of coming from high school to college. And very few of them have children or have children the age that go to the child care center. So the population has decreased. And this decrease uh, will not hurt that particular center. We have very carefully spoken to them about that as well. Um, in terms of the music and the arts and so forth, the our symphony uh, is, is, uh, fa is uh, in a sense, not totally funded by it, but certainly helped by the student activity fee. Our student uh, music clubs, we have all kinds of music clubs uh, and arts clubs from dancing to, to uh, singing and to playing and things of that sort. So that is being helped by it as well. Um, you, uh, also mentioned, you also mentioned that the welfare rights. Well, we now, this is, a, this is a, a, an organization that really serves CUNY, I have to say. By their own admission, they not only serve Hunter College students, these are advocacy group of, uh, uh, of women who run this organization uh, that helps students advocate for themselves. And now there's a little bit of a uh, fuzzy feeling about it because we now have CUNY Edge. Many of our colleges have, we used to be CUNY COPE, and now we have CUNY Edge. And it's a very successful program funded by CUNY, and we have two individuals who are actually working on it. So we felt that uh, they cover more of, of the student population than perhaps the, the welfare rights did because they only solely focus on, on, um, on the advocacy. But they do it for all of the CUNY. However, they, they house that hunter. Um, and it was established many, many years ago by a sociology professor, and I don't know the genesis of it. Um, then uh, we also have the Office of Accessibility. Their money really hasn't changed in that, and, and obviously we uh, uh, helped them. Envoy is a school newspaper, and unfortunately this year they did not run themselves very well. <laughs> and they did not publish very much at all. And, and, and the same thing with the Green Initiative, although one would think that this would be the up and coming, and it probably is. But it wasn't uh, run very well, nor did they do a lot of activities that involved a lot of students and so forth. So uh, perhaps the students felt that once they got the act really together, we can maybe do this again in a different way. Uh, so this is, uh, I think I covered most of the things that you asked about. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, yes. Um, I, I just I have a concern, uh, especially with the Child Care Center. I know you mentioned that the number of students that are parents has dwindled down, um, but across our system, there are students that potentially don't have access to child care services at their very campus due to overpopulation. Has the college um, considered offering opportunities to students at another college the, the ability to attend child care services at Hunter? Um, I'm not sure that the federal funding that we get would be approved for that, but I don't know that. Uh, we do have space in our child care center for any of our students who do have children of the age uh, that they uh, serve, which is, uh, you know, basically have to be toilet trained, <laughs> and, and then also the after school population. We do have spaces for our own students. I don't know about the other, whether that's even a possibility. So, so I'm sure. I mean, I can, I can just, uh, oh. I don't know about the capacity, um, at, but the, our protocol at the university is that. Um, the home campus, obviously, students get first priority. Then we offer it to, uh, to where there are waiting lists uh, to other campuses. And then at that point, a campus has the option of extending the opportunity for faculty staff child care at prevailing market rates. Um, but I don't know. Uh, I'd have to look into the capacity. Our capacity um, sure. at, at okay. sorry, excuse me. No, no. Our capacity at this moment is that we can take more uh, children. And, and so, okay. if what I'm hearing, there, there's space before we divest in the, 
the program for child care services, we need to see if there's an opportunity to offer students at the sister colleges like Baruch, John Jay, um, Gutman, BMCC, or City College, which is in the vicinity of Hunter College before we turn away any students. Because I know of students that are looking for services, but they couldn't get in because they go to some of these colleges, but may live close to Hunter. In, to, I would just, yeah, I just wanted to say, including if they're federal dollars, if the money is not spent, it ha it, there has to be a way in which it is returned. And I think rather than doing that, we should, uh, we should do an outreach to the sister institutions. Um, we try never sure. to return the federal money, by the way. Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> we try very hard that's never to return we, federal that's money. A, that, that, that's <laughs> what yes. I'm telling you right yes. now. I, I'm coming from child yes. care, so I know how yes. those rules work. Right. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But just to echo what Vice President Aravani and her, her comments, that we are finding a dynamic um, that child care centers are facing uh, where um, community options are expanding. And, and that's, the, that's mm -hmm. sort of a, the marketplace mm -hmm. for child care services, um, particularly in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. uh, there are more options now. So um, we still have a lot of unmet need, but there are other, there are, there are other competing options. And we're, we're trying to make sure that we're relevant, more relevant. If I might regard. also add is that we do have pre-K now. Mm -hmm. So some of the children that were going to child care in our place have chosen to go to the pre-K classes in their own neighborhoods. That's more convenient for the parents who go to college. Mm -hmm. So may, may I um, have a motion to approve? So Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? I think you have that. Thank you, Vice Thank you. Lovely. Thank you, Thank you very Thanks. much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, policy calendar item number five, your college student activity fee increase. Um, your college uh, is proposing uh, an increase of $5 in the student activity fee for full-time students, part-time, and summer activity fees. Uh, the last fee increase that uh, York experienced was in 2010. Um, this vote was a, a close one, 89 in favor and 87 opposed, um, a 2.6 percent voter participation rate. Um, it has strong support from President Keyes, and we're very pleased that President Keyes um, and Vice President Van, Van Ray could be here today um, to, to discuss this with us. May, could you please join us? We also have some students. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Vice Chancellor. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Great. Good afternoon. And so, to our student leaders, welcome. Could you please introduce yourself for the record? Sure. I'm Marcia Keyes, President of your college. Rachel Antoine, student body president. Julian Barrett, um, student government vice president. Uh, Vincent Banray, Vice President, Student Development. Welcome. Thank you. So we'll take questions, if you like, because um, the documents are in front of you. Yes, it's a close vote. Uh, but it did pass by two. A small vote for us, too, 2.6, 2.7. Um, but we do want you to know that um, the petitioning period uh, we had the necessary petitions, 10% or so, and we did have an election that was certified by CERC. So we'll take questions. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Yeah. How many students voted in the general elections? The same. If I, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 176. Yeah. Uh, 176 voted total for, for, the, yeah. for the elections yeah. and for and the referendum. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Out of a student population of? Um, about 8,000. 8, um, 6,000. But 6,700 matriculated students. 6,700 matriculated <laughs> students. Is, is there, a, does the notice go out ahead of time so that yes. all students know? Yes. 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 Yeah, the notice, uh, yes, the notice went out and uh, the this particular election was uncontested. So there were not a lot of students running. And the other factor was that the election was held right after spring break. Mm -hmm. uh, when students came back that particular week. And we're looking at uh, improving that by having the elections done prior to the spring break time. And also with the help of student government, we also had our members going around speaking to the student body as well about um, the referendum increase. 
Yes. Yeah, and it, as mentioned with the prior college, John Jay, um, this is a pattern. And what, what really alarms me is that, you know, our colleges are reaching the 10% the threshold for petitions, meaning that the student body is willing to entertain the conversation, right. but yet they won't come back out to take an action on it. And so that's what concerns okay. us most because I, I signed up and said, hey, I'm willing to see this on the ballot, but I'm not coming back to the polls to tell you what I think about it. And so for us, 176 people out of 6,000, everybody said, I'm willing to hear the conversation, but I don't want to make a decision on it. And so no one's, we don't have consensus, very tight election, 87 out, out of 86, yeah. out of 87. Yeah. It's tough. But, it, I, I don't know if I can support that. I don't know if that's the will of the students at your college. Well, it's the will of the people who voted, obviously. <laughs> uh, however, you know, a majority of two is not a significant majority, but it is a majority. If it had been the other way, we wouldn't be sitting here. Yes. Well, perhaps I could hear from the students why you think this increases needed. I have two students in the room. Okay. Um, I've had the opportunity to work in the student body um, government um, at your college. And within my two years of experience, um, I've received a lot of complaints when it comes to the fund that the clubs are receiving. Yes. And it was extremely low. And uh, before we took such decision, we had plenty of conversations with the club members as well as student leaders who are on campus. Yes. And to initiate this increase, we also talked about different ways that we would also involve the president of the clubs by forming a club council to have them involved in there. It's extremely important, especially within our association meeting this year, the money actually ran, it ran out. And we had to find other ways to help the student body. From receiving 13000 a year, there will be an increase in to 45000 and it will benefit the student clubs. Just to also state if it's okay, you know, this is another way of actually having our clubs, you know, enforce the policy or the process of exper experiential learning. You know, as an individual or as students, we'll be able to grow if we're learning about, you know, anybody's respected culture or anybody's respected fields that they're going in. But that's what I would like to state. Thank you. Uh, just want to add that what makes this a little bit easier to support as opposed to the other college. It's a $5 increase, whereas the other college was a $30 increase. But it's, you know, again, it's, it's tough. I'm, I don't have a direction from the students at York. That's, that's, that's who I look to for direction. And I do understand you're the elected student representatives. But where I'm at, at this table, I don't see a clear consensus from York saying, uh, Donovan, vote this way. This is what we want. Uh, but again, I do see it's five dollars, and it's it's not much on the students. But I would, you know, if I were to support this, I would urge that mm -hmm. you go back and communicate to all the students to let them know the change that's about to occur, mm -hmm. that they have the right to voice their concern at a public board hearing, um, and what measures and support services the college has to offer for the change in in tuition, if it were to occur. We always try to have that conversation with the students, yes. especially here. Our campus um, newspaper, Pandora Box. We put the information out there as well, email blasts. We talk to them. It's really hard to really get York students to stay on campus. So what we do is set tables and try to have an, your one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. Also. And town hall meetings as well. We also have a town hall meeting on that. Trustee yeah. Gucci. I wanted to make a comment because, um, you know, this is the second time also that, that we, we mention it. But um, I think it's reflective of how the election world or this space works where you have a majority and they don't partake. And I think it's not just in schools, but in the US. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's very reflective. To me, I'm like, this is how, this is where we are. And it's unfortunate um, that there's not more involvement. And, and I'm concerned with that too, because you're right, there's a whole other world that you don't know. Mm -hmm. But the lesson is, you need to participate, right? That's what yes. we tell people, you need to vote, your voice needs to be heard, you need to be engaged. And that's something that I think in general needs to be added. But um, you know, at the same time, you know, they are voting, 
they are uh, the ones that are voting are putting in their you know pieces of fans to say and it was a it was a close race I agree I'm glad it's only five dollars um, you know, it makes it easier yeah. to stomach you know but you know coming from this this background it's it's an ongoing battle um, and I think this year we saw that or last year we saw that heavily um, but you know, just to, to, to say that I know that it's a challenge, and and you can get out there and send all the mail you want. After a while, people don't even see it anymore; they yeah. just toss it. You know, so you can inform people, but either they want to participate or not. And this would be, um, hopefully, examples of when they say, "Why do I have an extra five dollars? What happened here?" It says, "Well, you didn't vote. Next time, you're going to pay attention to that, and hopefully, we'll have higher numbers." And that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping for moving forward. Yes. Uh, I, I agree with everything that was just said. I mean, I think of the terms like vote with your feet, right? You just leave and you don't participate. Uh, and usually, like, the sign of, the, of when things are going well is when fewer people vote. But as a body, we, uh, the, I mean, this committee and, and general student affairs, we need to consider, uh, and it doesn't have to be about this particular issue, but in the future, our minimum expectation of participation on the part of students in voting uh, particularly when it comes to fiscal affairs. So that's something that we might once again uh, look into and consider what we would uh, expect. And, uh, and you know, obviously this is going to travel down to the institutions and uh, because I, though I, I believe you when you say you made your best effort to get a turnout, uh, if you found out when you got here that you needed at least 5 to 10 percent of the student body voting, uh, you know, I wonder what the effort will be of the next institution. So that's something we, you know, we need to think of. Is granted, as said before, it is kind of a reflection of what's going on, but we're the ivory tower, so we can raise our expectations and, in fact, hope that here people behave better than they will in real life. So it's something that we might want to consider in the future. How we could help. Yeah, well, well obviously, we're here for support. Okay. Trustee Sunshine, I'll come back to Trustee Sunshine. Uh, yeah, I mean, I agree with everything that's been said. This, this is a disgrace. I mean, you know, you're, you're active and you're trying to do something, and the mm -hmm. fact that people can't vote, I mean, and it, you know, Myra made an analogy to a certain election last year where, you know, <laughs> participation and voter turnout changed the election, and we wouldn't have those hearings tomorrow if uh, a few more people voted in a couple of key states, but, you know, I'm having trouble getting past that. I always, <laughs> <laughs> but um, look, I think it, it is a rallying cry for the activists, and particularly talking to the students in all the campuses, that you know, you, you got to push your fellow students. You're out there trying to get this done. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this is the, the worst. Now, now, it's only $5, so it's, yep. you know, it takes on less uh, importance on one level. But get in the habit of voting for everything. Mm -hmm. Never not vote. Mm -hmm. In the other part of my life, I, you know, still obviously it's just like therapy for that election. Uh, you know, I, I'm obsessed. There is no excuse not to vote. Right? It's not hard, and it's anybody says it's it doesn't make a difference. They're wrong, and that's the philosophy. Of it. Okay. Yes. I just wanted to. I have a class I have to teach, um, and so my students are waiting for me. It's a final. Um, please forgive me, I must go. Thank you for your time. Yeah, you thank you. Didn't mention, yeah. Yes. And thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. Have a, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Um, may I have a motion to approve? Five dollars. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? The motion is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And will be advised by the comments you made today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, policy calendar item number six, the School of Professional Studies, the establishment of a college association. Um, and here, uh, I, I know Jane, is Jane Davis here? Jane? Uh, she is. Great. We're, we're pleased to have as a content expert our colleague from the General Counsel's Office, Jane Hi. Davis, who's available. Um, in the event that you have any questions about the establishment of college associations. Um, but uh, in uh, June 2016, the board uh, 
establish the student activity fee of $25 for the School of Professional Studies, and the College Association is the entity that would administer uh, these fees. And um, so, Jane, would you mind, please? Oh, great. Oh, I'm sorry. The the, sorry, John. We're joined by Dean Mogulescu and Z Lobley. And students, thank you. Sorry about that. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Uh, so I'm John Mogulescu. I'm the Dean of the CUNY School of Professional Studies. Uh, uh, I'll let folks in. Uh, Z Lobley is our Director of Student Services, and Z will introduce our two students as well. So these are two student leaders. They are the co-chairs of the Student Association, which this body approved last June. They are Yvette Humphreys and Shakima Williams-Jones, and Shakima was named the student leader of CUNY, the singular position, student leader of CUNY of the year this year for all the work that her uh, association and, and the vet together uh, made the association happen and, and did an enormous amount of work. So now we're ready to bring a college association into the mix to help oversee those financial issues. Thank you. Welcome. Thank and you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Any, anyone in the Yes. Mm -hmm. So could I hear from the student leaders, please, um, what sorts of things you're envisioning achieving with your college association? Well, we actually conducted um, a student survey because we wanted to know, we realized that we are student representatives and we wanted to do what the students want. And essentially, um, the gist of what they were saying to us is that they want more cultural activities, they want more community activities. Um, we are a predominantly online school, and so the thing that is hardest when you have um, students who are going to school online all the time and not having to, build, to visit the building constantly is that there's a lack of a sense of community because you're not seeing people face to face. You know, someone is just an avatar and an email address, and you're not just going to randomly, like, you know, select one and say, hi, how are you doing, and, you know, that sort of thing. And so they want activities and things to be done at school that help them to mitigate that and that help them to learn to know one another, learn, pe learn to know people outside of their discipline, um, and just create a real sense of community. I attended, I'm, I'm a master's student, but I attended Baruch College um, to get my bachelor's degree. And because I was an in-person student, there was a very large sense of community because I was seeing people, you know, regularly. Um, it, <laughs> it, um, so it definitely helps to have activities that happen at school and to give people reasons to come to school outside of academics and get to know one another. So that's what we want to try to do. And we also want to try to find ways for our students, because we do have a lot of students um, who don't live in the tri-state area and would not be able to come um, physically to something. But we also want to work to find ways to help them create a sense of community as well, whether it be some sort of online bulletin board or you know, pen, you know, an online pen pal type of thing. We're not sure exactly what, but that's what we're looking into now. Okay. So are you also imagining, uh, since uh, cultural activities were mentioned, something that would enhance curriculum within the School of Professional Studies, or? I don't think we're tackling curriculum so much. Um, I, I think we leave that to um, our wonderful faculty. Um, in staff that way. I think we would definitely, like we've heard tutoring said a lot, that is something that we think about. Um, the fact that, you know, because it's growing pains at this point. We're a newer college, we're a smaller college, and it's really just us trying to listen to the students and the things that they're saying that they need. Um, and the things that would probably be present um, in and are present in traditional colleges um, and in-person colleges and how to administer those things to online students, right? Because it's different. You know, there could be an office of student activities and you can go in there and sign up for a tutor in a traditional college. But in an online, you know, setting, how does that work? Where do you go? Is it a portal somewhere? You know, so it's that sort of thing. Um, we do not want to, um, for lack of better terminology, burden ourselves with curriculum. We think that that is, is taken care of and has been well taken care of um, at CUNY um, for years and years and years. But we do want to facilitate um, students doing well in school, completing their educations, and remove as many of those impediments as we feel like we can with our level of expertise. Mm -hmm. 
I was thinking more along the lines of experiential learning because yeah. there's that sort of there's a kind of attention. Well, we do that. have um, we do have a grant that we're going to administer uh, related to uh, professional development, um, and so one of the okay. things that could be considered is experiential learning. That's something that someone could apply for a grant for. Um, so yes, we we have taken that into consideration. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Any other questions? Student. I don't have any questions. I'm just, I'm just glad that uh, School of Professional Studies is finally getting a calling station. <laughs> <laughs> may, may I may I have a motion to approve? So, so, second. 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 Those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion is approved. Thank you very Thank much. You so much. Thank you, John. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our, our final policy calendar item, item number seven, uh, is an increase to the ceiling of payments of stipends uh, to student leaders. By way of context, um, the board policy that establishes the authority uh, to issue stipends to student leaders require that the maximum uh, award of stipends be reviewed every two years and changes considered tied to the consumer price index. Um, in the last time that, this, that the, the ceiling came up for review was in 2015. And at that time, um, there was a, a 0 0.7 increase in the CPI. Um, and because it would have resulted in a negligible uh, increase in student stipends, the board committee at that time voted to take no action um, and to leave the, the maximum award levels as they were. Um, 2017, two years later, um, we're asking this committee to, um, to consider uh, the relationship between the maximum award and the consumer price index. Um, there represents a 3.7% increase uh, between this, in the CPI between 2013 and 2017. And in terms of the range of, of existing maximum stipends, which are determined, uh, the stipend level are set at each campus, it would range from uh, a maximum award from $183. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, the increase, the annual increase, would result in a change, an increase from uh, $183 for the year on the low end to $398 on the high end. And just by way of context, uh, no campus is required to hit the ceiling. And no, none of our campuses, nor the USS, have there. Um, but this would uh, increase the ceiling, uh, the maximum stipend award that uh, campuses could, could raise the, the student stipend for. Um, uh, this was discussed uh, at the Chief Student Affairs Officers meeting the monthly meeting of the Vice Presidents of Student Affairs. And uh, there was, a, I think, a very robust conversation. But the Vice Presidents of Student Affairs supported the, the increase in the maximum award level. And we also had this discussion at the USS plenary meeting. It's, last, it's May plenary. And the USS also supports this increase. Uh, again, reminding the board that it's up to the individual campuses to set their, their stipend leader, uh, levels for elected leaders and none of them currently have hit the cap. Any questions? May I have a motion to approve? So, so moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No, any opposed? Abstentions? The motion is approved. Thank you, Madam Chair. And that concludes the policy calendar item. Information items, Brooklyn College Graduate School activity fee. Great. May I please mm -hmm. give yes. some context on yes. that? Mm -hmm. So um, the, this would have involved a, a $1 increase in the graduate student activity fee to earmark funds for the veteran student organization, which is a very dynamic and robust organization at Brooklyn College. Mm -hmm. Um, however, since only 1% of the graduate students voted and only 0.6% of all graduate students supported this, 
um, the referendum is not being supported uh, by President Anderson. Um, the college believes that other funds can support this very worthwhile organization, and they intend to do that. Um, Vice President uh, Jackson uh, is here uh, representing the college in the event that the committee has any questions about this. Vice President Jackson, thank you for being here. Thank you. Any questions, comments for Vice President Jackson? This is an information. Oh, this is an information. Just information. Okay, fine. Great. Ron, would you just like Ron, to maybe just make a statement yes. about it? Sure. Um, so last year we presented a referendum for our veteran student organization last year that did pass um, through the undergraduate students. Um, so the veterans actually haven't even had a full year right now with their current referendum. So the concern was that they really haven't demonstrated if they actually need the additional money. Um, so they've, they've started this past spring with half of the referendum. This upcoming year, they'll have that complete referendum. Um, they'll still have the opportunity to go to the graduate student organization to request grant funds um, as well. And so what we've um, advised them is to kind of really use the year to kind of gauge the monies that they have right now to determine if they actually do need that additional funds, as well as if they decided to go with the referendum again. Uh, we, we heard the board last year um, with the low vote, and we've con gone back to them to say, you know, you're really going to have to get out there and push the students to vote on it um, with a very, very low turnaround. Um, President Anderson just did not feel comfortable making that decision for all 3,000 graduate students. Thank you, very, thank you very much. Thank you, Vice, thank you, Vice well. President Jackson. We appreciate it. Okay. Thank, you. thank you, Vice President Joseph. Thank you. Um, Vice Chancellor's report. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, since we've last gathered, it's been a very robust period of, of programming for all of our colleagues throughout the university and student affairs. Um, I'll just hit some of the highlights. Uh, on April 7th, more than 120 CUNY staff, faculty, and administrators who helped to execute orientation or transition programs at CUNY campuses gathered at City College for the inaugural CUNY Orientation Institute. This day-long program focused on the identification of best practices in new student orientation that have an impact on retention, academic momentum, student success, and campus community building. Particular emphasis was placed upon the role of new student orientation and facilitating the seamless transition of transfer students, an underappreciated and underattended to a group of, of CUNY students. On April 28th, we're really pleased that more than 100 faculty and academic advisors who are leaders in CUNY experiential learning space gathered at Gutman Community College for the second annual experiential learning conference. Among the themes for this year's conference were the implications of experiential learning as a priority within CUNY's strategic framework and the role that academic advisement can play in linking students to experiential learning opportunities that build upon what they're learning in the classroom and help to ready them for the world of work. Uh, a very special thanks to President Evanbeck for his staunch support uh, and really creating this opportunity for us. Uh, Laura Gambino from, from his team was a stalwart and pulling this together. And his remarkable team at Gutman uh, really helped our team in, in the Central Office of Student Affairs to build CUNY's capacity around experiential learning. Um, on Friday, May 12th, uh, we were pleased to host the 24th Annual Vice Chancellor's Awards for Excellence in Leadership at City College. This ceremony is a CUNY tradition, recognizing students who have demonstrated outstanding leadership abilities in both academic and co-curricular activities. This year, in addition to honoring two Vice Chancellor Award recipients uh, selected by the Chief Student Affairs Officers from each campus, we also recognize students who have excelled within childcare, residence life, and women's center communities. They received the Child Care Student Success Award, the Resident Assistant Leadership Award, and the Student in Service to Women Leadership Award. Uh, on May 2nd, CUNY BMI held its second annual Spring Benefit fundraising event at John Jay College of Criminal Justice. And I thank uh, 
uh, Chair Clark for, for joining us there and really helping us to host that opportunity. Um, hosted by America's psychologist and radio personality, Dr. Jeffrey Gardier, and honoring Assembly Member Michael Blake, President Travis, and BMI's corporate partners at Citibank. The spring benefit was a complete sellout and exceeded its fundraising goal by more than, uh, by earning more than uh, $50,000 in support of key BMI student programs. On May 18th, CUNYAC hosted the 31st annual Michael Sturman Scholar Athlete Awards Dinner at Queens College. The gala ceremony uh, inducted 138 scholar athletes into the CUNYAC Honor Roll and celebrated 41 CUNY student athletes who were named Division III All-Americans. Stephen Cadigan of Kingsboro, uh, Lindsey Pirro of Hunter College, Carmen <coughs> Cavallo of Queensboro, and Timothy Sweeney of the College of Staten Island were celebrated as the CUNY Scholar Athletes of the Year. Um, for the all-sport excellence of their athletic programs, Queensboro and Hunter Colleges were awarded the Commissioner's Cup by our Commissioner, Zach Ishkovic. Finally, Queens College graduating senior Madison Rowland became the first player in women's college basketball history in any division to record more than 2,000 points, 1,000 rebounds, 5,000 steals, and 4,000 assists. Rowland led the Queens College women to the Elite Eight in the NCAA Division II college basketball tournament. I'm also proud to report that Kingsboro Community College's men's and women's track and field teams were crowned NJCAA 2017 national champions. Clearly, it was a banner year for CUNY athletics, and we're really proud of our student athletes. On May 1st, Governor Cuomo announced that the New York State Office of Alcohol and Substance Abuse Services had awarded grants to five CUNY colleges to support the development of campus community coalitions and foster community co partnerships to help strengthen local prevention efforts, specifically focusing on students from ages 18 to 24 years of age. Baruch, City College, John Jay, Lehman, and the College of Staten Island each were awarded up to $125,000 annually for five years in support of these programs. These campus-based projects support the governor's goal of promoting strategies that prevent underage drinking and equip students and their families with essential knowledge while continuing to make state uh, and city campuses uh, safer and their commu surrounding communities. In April, the Central Office of Student Affairs was thrilled to learn that the FAR Fund, the Fund for Autism Research, had awarded CUNY an unprecedented sixth year of funding at $100,000 level to support model projects at six CUNY colleges that support the success of CUNY students on the autism spectrum. Students on the spectrum are far and away CUNY's fastest growing student population of students with disabilities, and this six-year investment by the FAR Fund has enabled CUNY to build its capacity to meet the multidimensional needs of neurodiverse students at the university. In May, uh, the Central Office of Student Affairs received an MOU from uh, New York State Education Department Executive Deputy Commissioner Elizabeth Berlin proposing a five-year, $4.9 million agreement through which CUNY would provide supported higher education services to CUNY students with disabilities who are particularly at risk of being left out of the workforce. Such students include students with learning disabilities and the burgeoning population of students on the autism spectrum. The source of the funding is the Federal Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, otherwise known as WIOA. State Ed has proposed this partnership based on uh, its validation of the efficacy of our CUNY LEADS program uh, for career readiness for students with disabilities and Project REACH, uh, which builds campus's capacity to serve neurodiverse students. Our CUNY Disability Services team has worked for a year with SED on this agreement and we actually worked with the state to design a new contractual services category, supported higher education services, for which these WIOA funds could be drawn down in support of the success of CUNY students. Um, finally, on May 22nd, the University Student Senate completed the academic year with a robust agenda at its monthly plenary meeting at Gutman Community College. This meeting was significant in that it closed an academic year during which USS achieved quorum at every single one of its meetings, plenary and steering committee. So when you consider the demands placed on our USS leaders, school, work, family responsibilities, and the considerable responsibilities of shared governance, 
this is a truly remarkable achievement. And it speaks to the selfless devotion of USS to representing the interest of CUNY's more than a half a million students. It also speaks to the outstanding leadership of our student trustee, Chika Onyejekwa, and her vice chairs and a remarkable staff, including Donovan Borington. So thank you to University Coordinator of Student Activity, Charmaine Worthy, Professors Hugo Fernandez and Emily Tai, and Public Safety Officer Freddy Torres for their staunch support of USS throughout the year, and to President Evan Back for allowing USS to call government's home uh, every second Sunday. Thank you, and that concludes my report. Are there any questions? If not, we Thank can. You, Madam Chair. If not, we can give him a little cheer. For the <laughs> Vice Chancellor. So now we will go into executive session. That means the camera goes off. Or yeah. You have to take a motion to go into executive oh. session. May I, take, may I take a motion? I move. So move? Yes. Second. Right. Second. 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 We are in.